In this video, we're gonna see together how to better use our elbows and our knees in flow work, in our ground-based movement, to have a more rounded and a more efficient movement on the floor. What's up guys, this is Vincent Viss and this is the channel for the Flow Work Academy. Now my mission in these videos is to give you tips about either a specific technique, so teaching you the fastest way towards a specific movement, or to share with you some of the secrets I have gathered during my research over the last 10 years that hopefully will allow you to get better at moving on the floor as fast as possible. Now, of course, this is meant as an introduction because I don't know where you are at in your journey, but hopefully it will help you. If you want more structured content, if you want some guidance in your journey, then heads to the description below. You will have all the links to get all the serious material I have been designing over the years. Now it's quite cold today in the studio. I hope to get rid of the jacket quite soon. Basically today we're gonna see how commonly we forget that our elbows and our knees are absolutely one of the most important landing paths that we have at our disposal when we move across the floor. So let's take a step back. Floor work, as you can imagine, if you have ever seen anyone moving on the floor, is about changing levels. They don't stay on one same plane, they move up and down. But we add with some form of a round quality to it. Of course, the amount of time one person is gonna stay closer to the floor may be different from another simply because different practices, different styles, different contexts call for different ratios being between being standing up and on the floor. For instance, if you take the case of somebody who would be practicing break falling for a martial arts practice, they would start a lot from a higher up stance and go all the way down trying to roll their way there as softly as possible and protecting the important parts in their bodies. Versus if you look at a pole dancer, they will spend a lot of time on the floor until they get to the pole again. But regardless of that, we have to acknowledge that we are going to travel in between different levels in flow work. And there's many different ways to codify that, but I'm gonna give you the most simplest maybe, but the one that makes the most sense when we begin flow work. Obviously, we go from a higher up position down to a lying down position with a few things in between. So let's have a look together. So let's assume that we wanna travel from this standing up position all the way to a lying down position. Well, obviously, one of the main anchoring positions would be standing up. Notice that as we make our way down, two things happen. One, our pelvis gets closer to the floor until it is on the floor. And as we keep traveling down, our head gets closer to the floor until it finds itself on the floor. Now, what do we have in between this standing up position and this lying down position? Two main things. One, a sitting up position in which our bum is on the floor and that allows us to transition down or up. And then, very important, a crouch position, which can be either a squat or some form of a tripedal, in which our pelvis is close to the ground, but off the ground. Then the more you can see that, the more you can recognize these different positions, the more you'll be able to decipher movement when you see somebody moving on the floor. And understanding the beginning and the end of each movement and recognizing the positions in which you start and finish your movements will allow you to maximize your vocabulary and learn movements faster. That's what Edo made famous with the closed flow system, an improvisation that revolves around a couple of movements which have in common one anchoring position. Now, the reason why we are going to pick these four positions, standing up, being in a tripod, sitting down, and lying down, is because they're the most commonly used in floor work. They're the positions out of which so many movements start and finish. And chances are you're gonna 
encounter them quite often in your practice. But of course, as you get more and more specialized in your movement, you might design for yourself more advanced or specific anchoring positions, which will allow you to classify your vocabulary differently. Namely, for instance, if you're quite confident with your 2DRs, then this position might deserve your attention. If you're somebody who rolls a lot on the floor and perform a lot of shoulder stands, then maybe this position here will be one of these anchoring positions. Regardless, we understand that we are traveling up and down, and then in the process, and that in the process, our bum is getting closer and closer to the floor until it is on the floor, and then our head gets closer and closer to the floor until it is on the floor. And what tends to happen, believe it or not, when we perform these transitions down and up, is that we tend to forget about our elbows and our knees. And the result of that is, and that's even more true when you go fast, the result of that is we will drop at some point. We will drop the weight instead of gradually transferring the weight into the body part that meets the floor. And efficiency is predicated by your capacity to transfer the weight gradually to every single support that finds the floor. And something very obvious that we want to pay attention to is that as we bring our pelvis to the floor, we, will we can use the knee between the foot and the hip to find the floor. This gives you more time and more support to find the floor softly with your bum. And similarly, as we transition down from a sitting down position to a lying down position, don't forget that the elbow is the intermediator between your hand and your shoulder. And so instead of trying to balance your way here and accumulate the tension in your neck and your other limbs, to find the floor with your shoulder, is use your elbow to gradually roll on it and out of it. Simple, but not easy. The intermediator, the third party, between being on our feet and sitting down and between sitting down and lying down are our knees and our elbows. And so here is a small drill that you can do before you start isolating your movements and working on your technique, something that you can do after you warm up, which will pay off a lot in terms of movement quality. You will start at one side of the room and travel down as you progress through the room all the way to the other end. Now, in order for us not to think too much about what we're doing, we're gonna add a constraint. And that constraint is we're gonna put something on the floor and our mission while traveling from point A to point B is going to pick the thing that we left on the floor. Now, the main goal of this drill is that you want to use your elbows and knees as much as possible and pin down where, whenever you are failing to use them, feeling the drop in your shoulders, in your pelvis, so that the next time you start improving that. So again, two main missions. We go from point A to point B. We try to pick something on the way and we want to make our transition down and up as soft as possible. So I'm gonna put a remote here. And here's an example, but obviously this is not about you copying me. I am going to try to travel all the way down this side of the room. I find the floor, notice my knee helping me find the floor gradually with my pelvis and same thing with my elbow. And because I'm thinking about this, remote, I won't have as much headspace as I would have if my only mission was to go from point A to point B. So again, changing the position of the remote, keeping the same point A and point B, but now adding another complexity, I want to travel down and up in one go. And you want to start 
Noticing when you are going through the same movement patterns and ask yourself if there is a way you can, if there's a different way you can move down and up. In other words, can I find different movements to perform the same action? So starting here, paying attention to my knees and elbows. And here. This doesn't look like much, but trust me, in my experience, it is what pays off the best and the fastest. Everybody is drawn to the power moves. Everybody wanna be able to do a macaco, a no hand cartwheel and whatnot. But if you cannot use these movements within something flowy, they're pretty much useless. These kinds of movements here, these kinds of exercises, teach your brain to understand what makes a movement flowy. More importantly, to notice whenever you are not, to pay attention to the things that matter when you are moving on the floor. Can you find the floor softly without using your knees and your elbows? Of course, but first start using them properly so that your using them or not becomes a conscious choice. And of course, there's a thousand different variations that we can derive out of this first drill, but I'm sure it is enough right now to help you. Give it a bash, tell me how it went in the comments. And if you have any question about any specific move or about any specific context or about any specific technique, leave me a comment. If you like this kind of content, if it's helping you move in practice, give me a thumb up and say it so in the comments, it really helps me. And again, if this resonates with you, then I invite you to check out the links in the description where you will be able to take your practice a bit deeper or probably a lot deeper.